Good afternoon, everybody. Andy Pedraza here. Give me a couple of minutes and we'll get started. Okay, once again, this is Andy Pedraza with Special Effects Academy. Welcome to the end of the week wrap up for the week ending today, March 23rd of 2018. Let me see who we have on the line. All righty. Is that you on uh, the uh, unnamed device, Jeffrey? Uh, I, I yep, I'll, I'll, yeah, take that, I'll take that as a yes. Thank you. Okie dokie. Welcome aboard, guys. Okay, I'm going to start this out. This is our regular end of the week our review. Look over what trades we opened, what the results were, and uh, what's uh, on tap for the following week, if there's anything going on. A very short uh, table of contents, uh, the trades, the balance, uh, opportunities for improvement, where we review anything we might have done um, differently in, um, in the trades that were open throughout the week and any trades that we are going to be keeping open throughout the, um, the weekend and into the next trading week. Bear with me, my screen is doing odd things, but it should be coming back to you guys. Sorry about that. Okay, uh, we're back uh, with the table of contents. I'll move on to the open trades and we'll give a bit of a review. I have highlighted the big winners and big losers for the week. Anything under $100 is basically for me a flat trade at the size of, uh, of account uh, we're tracking for the Forex trading room. So we had a very good trade with the Aussie JPY. And we had a couple, couple, three decent other trades here and there. Unfortunately, we also had a few losers, mainly surrounding the uh, fundamental that uh, tricked us out. We did get in in the right direction. Our stop was too tight. It did retrace and uh, went on to fulfill the direction we had initially jumped in. But personally, I was no longer in those trades. I did jump back into a number of them after words which uh, helped recover from that event but in general order we had a really good trade at the beginning we had a couple of uh, negative trades that breached a hundred dollar point uh, a third one then we had three winners in a row and finally last night the uh, euro jpy did take us out at a loss I have not included any absolutely flat trades in this um, review, but there were a number of them. As trades start moving in our favor, we tend to lock that in by starting to move the stop loss. So there were a number of trades. Uh, the last one, you may see that the USDJPY trade entered at the same time as the EuroJPY is not here on that list. That's because it did move enough to move the stop loss, and we got out flat on that one. The EuroJPY didn't move enough and went on to um to cause a loss overall we had uh, about 200 dollars worth of profit for the week uh, 
uh, could have been better. Again, there was a high number of losers that we normally don't have, uh, except in a fundamental week, uh, especially when we get either faked out or jump in the wrong direction. So overall, the end of the week, uh, the last two days of the week, we're basically recovering from that event, which was managed to a degree. It was a bit higher yesterday, uh, 24 hours ago. But say, la vie, this is just a lesson that in trading, you can't make every week a stellar week. That's just not the way it works. You're going to have good weeks, um, lackluster weeks, and bad weeks. This one was a winner, but I still would consider it a lackluster. This is below my usual target for a trading week. So I'll try to do better next week, but overall, not a, um, not a bad experience. You got to be in the game in order to win the game. And sometimes the cost of being in the game is that you take some of these hits. So that was our ledger, our balance graph for the week. And this is only showing the actual week of trading. So did start out strong with, um, with that initial $300 trade. Then it just went uh, lackluster through Wednesday. And then we have a bit of a recovery. Didn't quite make it back to the high that we carried after that first successful trade, but we're certainly above the, um, the low that was um, after the fundamental. So next week we'll continue on uh, trading this towards uh, something of a, um, a recovery and onto bigger profit. Again, not really a recovery. We are positive overall by, like I said, 190 something dollars. Also, you have to take into account that we do have a cost of trading represented by the commissions and the swap, the commission and the spread, same general thing uh, you've got to pay in order to trade. The swap is when we did carry trades open beyond a day. Some of them work out in your favor. This one here at uh, 90 cents is a positive, but most of them tend to work against you over time. So that's another factor. So in total, we had uh, about uh, $90 worth of trading costs there, which is why um, the balance also got reduced. So keep that in mind as you trade and as we go along. Um, that is the end of the actual slides. Um, let me go back to the contents. So opportunities for improvement, definitely the, um, the fundamental that was, uh, that is a big opportunity for improvement. The direction was right. That's uh, probably the most unfortunate thing I can say about that trade. Had we gone in in the direction that it initially took us and had our stops been wider than they were set, it would have uh, carried us into a very high profit for the week. Most fundamentals tend to move very rapidly and very quickly in one direction and then retrace. That was the strategy that was being used. This was one of the outliers, the exceptions, in that it moved up, retraced, and then slowly made its way up throughout the next 24 to 48 hours. So it was a relatively slow moving fundamental, but still everything you saw on dollar weakness from Wednesday through the end of the week was based on that fundamental announcement and nothing else. So, and most of my recovery was based on trading it in that direction, but I was uh, in the hole as uh, I began. So mostly it was making back the, um, the initial loss. I hope you guys managed to do some of that as well. Um, and that's about all I can say is for opportunities for improvement. Other than that, we did pretty much follow uh, the strategies where we're um, tracking in the Forex trading room at this point, which do depend on what the market is doing. So those strategies do change over time. But once we're in a strategy, we do let it play out until it um, expires on its own before we see what the next strategy should be for whatever the market is doing. So that's about it on the opportunities. As to open trades, I still have one open trade, the Euro Pound. I am still short on that one. It is a hanging out pretty much at break even. The snapshot that I showed you guys of both the, uh, of the uh, trades open and closed for the week, as well as the balance graph, that is a snapshot I took right after the noon session 
of this trading room. So it does not include that one open trade that'll be uh, closed or continued next week. So it'll be in, in that deck when, if and when we close it. Um, and that's it for me. Um, Joseph, not sure how you did throughout the week. I'm sorry this week wasn't a better first week for you. I do try to, if it's not, a, if I don't hit it out of the park in your first week, I do comp you for the second week. So consider yourself invited at no extra cost for the week to come. Um, if you want to chime that. in and tell us how you did or, or any comments, we'd appreciate that. Uh, I ended negative for the week. Um, I just never recovered from that initial, uh, it was the Canadian, no, the Euro, uh, Canadian trade we did. And then I had a couple of others that, uh, I did on my own that I lost on and I just never recovered from that. Hmm. Okay. Did you ever take any USD weakness trades after the fundamental? Yeah, I took, um, I'm in the Australian dollar in the USD right now, and then I took the uh, the Kiwi in the US dollar. Um, okay. I the so, so you recovered a bit. You recovered a bit on those. Actually, the Australian hasn't done much, but the Kiwi yeah, definitely uh, went up. Yeah, I, I made a little bit off the Kiwi. I closed that out this morning about ten fifteen, ten thirty ish. Okay. And then the uh, Aussie dollar, I still have open. <laughs> yeah, um, I, I would I would still have it open as well, though um, you weren't on the noon session, but I am looking at that Aussie dollar because it's one of the, I think it's the only one that actually went into dollar strength instead of uh, going into dollar weakness. Yeah. And that may be a late bloomer. Are you short on that one or long? I am long. I'm about Perfect. 50 pips uh, away from my entry point. Okay, so that one has been going counter to the rest of the market. And when that happens, uh, there, you usually have a rubber band effect on the next week as that one hurries to catch up. So for whatever reason, the dollar got stronger against the Aussie. That's a little bit unnatural based on what the rest of the market did. Now, if the dollar strengthens for any reason, then you're going to be in the hole. But if it doesn't, if things continue the way they are right now, then the Aussie dollar is probably going to catch up with a vengeance, in which case it's going to be moving in your direction. I already highlighted that one as one of the key pairs I'm going to be looking at on Sunday, simply because it's, uh, it's been a straggler. It, it hasn't done the move I would have expected based on what the rest of the market did. Mm -hmm. okay. okay. So again, thank you for participating. I'm sorry you didn't have uh, the best experience the first week, but uh, again, I hope to see you next week and um, hopefully uh, we'll, we'll get you back on track. Um, yeah, I'll be around for next week. Excellent. excellent. And I appreciate that. Hey, no problem. It's going to be the same link you have. Um, you'll be getting emails as well, but um, in, in case of, of anything, it's going to be the same times, same uh, link, same everything. Let's see. Uh, Jeffrey, um, why don't you chime in? What's, uh, what's going on with you right now? Well, you know, I had that uh, Euro GBP. That was that was a good one, and then I took a few more of uh, those trades from yesterday evening, and they they took me out uh, at losses, but you know overall I'm, I'm I'm satisfied. Awesome. So you did close out the Euro GBP at profit, so that one stopped you out at your profit point. And, uh, and overall, uh, I, I guess you either banked a bit of profit this week or, or ended a little bit flat. Which one was it? A little profit, yeah. A little bit. Okay, good. All righty. Um, so we'll, uh, we'll continue uh, working with you next week as well. Uh, Callum, anything on your end? Yeah, I was just going to say... Uh, the biggest takeaway, I think, from everyone is is the fact that it doesn't matter what kind of week you have. If you notice, Andres doesn't show any emotion. It's just, you know, it's just the week. It doesn't matter. We'll pick it up next week. And that's that's the kind of sort of emotionless trading you've got to get to. Because if you hold an attachment to the fact that you've had a loss or if you start, oh, I want to get my money back on the next trade, I'm going to fight the market. You know, then that's when you start having losing weeks. Never mind, you know, 
continuous losing weeks, never mind just the one. So that's the, the big takeaway is these weeks are going to happen and you just, you know, brush it off. It's just part of the game. Good point, good point. And the other thing I would like to add to that is there's many different styles of trading. And you guys will naturally gravitate to whatever your comfort zone in that sense is going to be. You're going to be either scalpers, you're going to be swing traders, you're going to have a specific style that's your forte. I try to look for the bigger movements, as you can see, so I'm willing to take slightly higher losses in return for slightly higher wins. If I were scalping the market, which is pretty much what I did the last couple of days when I was in recovery mode, I went into, uh, into a scalper mentality just to ride the, uh, the waves that, especially the USDJPY. If you look at the USDJPY, once I started scalping it, um, after the, um, the Wednesday debacle, we had this profitable trade at 83 then we continue to another one at 146, another one at 177. So the USDJPY scalping it, and I did that very safely, gave me about $400, uh, which would be about 200 pips worth of, uh, of recovery for that week. So you can make money scalping. It takes a little bit more dedication. And this is why I didn't specifically alert those trades. I just said, go in the direction of dollar weakness because that's what the market was doing. But uh, the point of my story is that depending on your style, your account is going to show a certain pattern. If you're scalping, you're looking for consistent small wins. Your account is going to be growing by a small amount every week pretty much consistently you're going to take 100 here or 120 there every week is going to build you up but you're never going to have those big wins my account shows a more exponential performance in that i can have a number of flat weeks even losing weeks again this week wasn't technically a loser i'm still up uh, from where i was but i still consider this a flat week that is not good payback for my time but what you'll see in my account is that you have a series of weeks that really aren't anything to write home about. And then suddenly you have a week that made a 50% profit on the account. And that takes us to a new level. Suddenly we're at $8,000. <coughs> Sorry. Instead of $5,000. Which allows us then to continue trading uh, these weeks that don't move much, but our profit is going to start to get a little bit higher simply because we have more in the game. We're taking a bit of a higher lot size every time, and uh, we're taking the same pips as before, but a higher profit. And then a few weeks down the road, boom, another 40 or 50% week, which takes us to the next plateau. And that's how my account tends to grow. It grows in jumps. It is very digital as opposed to analog. A scalper's account is gonna show an analog progression. Analog, if you look at a clock, an analog clock, that second hand is covering every bit of space in between one second and the next, or 10 seconds and the next 10 seconds. Every bit of real estate within that area is being covered by the second hand. In a digital clock, you don't see that. It jumps from one to two, and then from two to three. My performance tends to be digital. I have those jumps, whereas uh, trading smaller time frames, a scalper uh, type of account, you see a more analog approach. So you guys are going to discover what your approach is. Now you know mine. I just explained it to you. And and you can mix and match. I certainly mix and match because I don't try to force the market to do what it's not doing. If I see that the week is a scalper's week, like the last three days of this week were, I will turn into a scalper because that's what the market is doing. But normally I try to look at the uh, longer term trades that do give me the, um, the higher wins. And on that note, I'll leave it, um, I'll leave it at that. We will reconvene Sunday at 6 p.m. Eastern during daylight time in the U.S., adjust your, um, for your time zone, of course, and do our start of the week analysis. In advance, I can tell you that I'm going to be looking very closely at USD CAD, EuroCAD, and uh, 
Jeez, Jeffrey, what was the other one? GBPJPY, I think. GBPK for sure. GBP CAD, thank you. Thank you. So I'm going to be very focused on the CAD because the CAD strengthened significantly this week against um, several other currencies. And there has been no underlying change. So I may be looking for a retrace. Um, you guys know me. You should by now. I don't jump in just based on that. I need to have a signal from the market. But the uh, Canadian looks to be poised to do a test of the prior highs before it does anything else. And if that happens, there's about 200 pips to be made on each one of those charts that I just mentioned. So I'm going to be keeping a very close eye on that one. And of course, I will scan the entire market looking at the daily charts, maybe even the weekly in some cases, to get an idea of the overall direction. But I hope to see you on Sunday evening then, and I wish you guys a great weekend. Any last questions or comments before we close this off? No, just thank you all. Anytime, anytime. Yeah, thank you. you no worries. Sure. And uh, Joseph, at some point, if you want, this is just an open offer. If you want, I'll be happy to, um, to open a session just with you. And you let me look at some of what you're doing and your trading so I can get a better idea of your style and, um, and give you a little bit of, um, I, I guess, advice in, in the background for what you're doing. No, uh, no pressure, no cost, no nothing, just an open offer if you want to take advantage of it. Yeah, we could definitely do that next week. Um, I think I'm definitely more of a scalper right now, and I kind of want to get away from that, and I want to learn um, more about swing trading and stuff. So I'm definitely taking the lower profits and not sticking with it and letting it actually run. And that's fine because that is basically a, um, a characteristic of the size of your account. The mm -hmm. smaller your account is, the less it's going to work for swing trading. It's going to be more of a scalper account. As you grow, though, you're going to see that uh, it's better to let your money work for you as opposed to you working for the money. And you tend to mm -hmm. let your, your money ride on those uh, longer-term movements. But when you're starting out, definitely scalping is uh, probably what you want to do. Okay. Okay, guys, then uh, thank you very much, and I'll talk to you soon. All right. Thanks, guys. See ya. Take care. Bye-bye.